I didn't forget to enlarge the font this time, so now you might be able to actually read it. In this part, we're going to go over an if statement, how to check for a condition, and then do something if that condition is true. If it's false, do nothing or do something else. We'll decide how that'll go here in a second. So what we have now is we have a damage player method. We can pass a value to that damage player method, and then it will take that amount of damage from the player's health, right? Simple enough. But what if he gets down to zero life? We want something to happen. So we need to check for that. The way you do that is an if statement. So I want to say if, not out there I'm not, first we're going to set up another a method. It's going to be another mono behavior method. I'm going to put it below start here to keep them all together. It's going to say void update. Now, this is just like start in that it comes prepackaged in mono behavior class, but it does something quite a bit different. What it does is every single frame, everything inside of this method gets called, it gets used. So think frames per second. So every frame, whatever's in here will happen. So if you're getting 60 frames a second, everything inside of this method will be called 60 times a second. So make sure you use this most efficiently. If you don't use it very efficiently, you're going to cause some issues. There is another version called fixed update, which will be called, I believe it's 50 times a second. It won't go above that, it won't go below that, unless I guess you have to go below that. But the idea is, if you're using like some kind of phys physics calculations, or you're doing something that's based a bit more on time, then maybe, say you're getting 300 FPS, you don't want to do some of that stuff 300 times a second, surely. You can do it 50 times a second. Or we can use a time class and do it that way, but we'll talk about that later. In the update, what you want to do is check for stuff that you need to know when something changes or when something happens. So in this case, we want to know if the player's health gets to zero or below. So we have to do that every frame. We could do that every 50, we could do it 50 times a second and it'd be fine, but we're going to use update. I want to say if, so it's an if statement and parentheses once again, and then block that out. So inside of this if, we're going to have our condition. What we want to do is make sure that our health is equal to zero before we do something about it. So we'll say health is equal to zero. And that's how you would do that. The double equal sign is checking for, uh, a, like, it'd be like a boolean, right? You're checking to see if that is, if it is, then this would be true. So if you're setting a value though, you would use the single equal sign. Now health is equal to zero. And that's not what we want. We want to check to see if it is equal to zero, not set it to equal something. So saying if the health is equal to zero, we'll do something. But what if the player has 10 life and he takes 20 damage in a single hit? He now has below zero life. So you have to check to make sure he's not below zero life as well. So we'll say if the health is less than or equal to zero, do something. Something we'll do for now is we'll do a print and then we'll do a debug. This is the same thing as printing, just a bit different. So we'll do a debug.log. Now what this is, is it's a debug class. And this is a method inside that class, a so debug.log. And then you will do the parentheses and close that like that. So now we're accessing a class with some dot syntax style stuff. And then we're accessing a method inside of that class. Inside of that we'll have parentheses. And I'll say the player has died. Then we'll do uh, we'll do a health and then we'll do that. This needs to be inside of some quotes and then we'll add on the health value just like that to make sure that it's definitely zero or below zero. Now we'll come back in here and we'll click play. Well we didn't take enough health to kill him did we? So, so we'll take away 15 life. Click play and it goes into zero, and now every frame it's like, oh no, the player died, his health is zero. So what we'll do now is we'll take away 20 life. This will be more than the life the player actually has. So what happens then? Well, obviously we're checking for that, so it's not, I'm not, 
acting like you're stupid or anything, but what I mean is, what happens now? Now his player, now that player's health is negative five, and we don't want that. We want the player's health, if it goes below zero, to be zero. So if it's below zero, we'll say the player's health is equal to zero. We don't want it to be below zero. If it is zero, and it sets itself to zero, it doesn't matter. So there's no wrong thing about this. If the health is below or equal to zero, the health is equal to zero. So we'll check that. Shouldn't have to check this, but just want to show you. There you go, zero. And we're taking away 20, 20 life. Okay, now, so what if his health isn't less than or equal to zero? What if we want to check to see if his health is greater than a certain point? But we don't want to do that if we're checking if the health is already zero, because then we'll just be wasting some, some, some time there. So we're going to say, if that isn't true, it'll continue down, right? So the first thing it'll check for is if we have an, an else statement below that. If there is an else statement, it'll do whatever the else statement says to do. And in our case, our else statement will also have an if. What is that buzzing noise? Hope you don't hear that. So else if, so if this isn't true, else do whatever's inside of this one. Now we could just say else like this and just do this no matter what else is true. But we don't want to do that. So if this is false, it'll do this stuff no matter what. But I want to say, what if, what if his health is greater than 15? Okay. So what I want to do then is we'll actually do greater than or equal to, so it will say it because he has 15 life. You, uh, we'll do a print now because we use a debug. Now we'll do a print. All kinds of messy stuff going on here. You have a lot of life. So now if the health is not equal to zero, which it will be, it didn't say that that time. So what if I do now, if I bring, if I don't do any damage to the player, it will be, you have a lot of life. And then if I was to do, you know, the damage, it would stop saying that and start saying, oh, you died. That's the idea. So when the player dies, what we want to do is actually just delete his object, at least for now. So what we could do is when the health is equal to zero, we want to destroy the game object. So in this case, we're on the game object we want to destroy. If the health is equal to zero on this object, destroy this game object. So destroy game object. Now when it gets down to zero, which will make sure we do enough damage, 15, when it gets down to zero, well, he just went away instantly. That's the idea, though. <laughs> so he gets killed, and his object goes away because his health is equal to zero. And that's that's how that works. Now, in a, a more advanced game of some kind, you would obviously have like a death animation, and then maybe the body would wait around for a while. Then you would clean up your mess. But for now. That's the idea. You just destroy the game object. Destroy does have a time variable, or a time, yeah, a time parameter. So you could say after five seconds. Now this is a float. A float is like an integer, except a float can have a decimal point. So your floating numbers on the right side of the decimal point. And the idea is with a float, you have to put an F after the number so that the engine knows that it's a float, and not just. So I could do five point five and that would work but if this was an integer i couldn't do a decimal point it would be like what is that but with a float defined by the f next to it you can do that in javascript you don't need the f but who cares about javascript there we go i don't know what i was looking for honestly oh he'll die after 5.5 seconds for some reason that's a long time so we'll just wait for that i'll just sit here and watch him Boom, he's dead. Okay, cool. And that is how you do a conditional check. In the next part, we will be discussing how to access a property of a, another class from outside of that class, as that is an important mechanic in any kind of game development. You have to know how to access a value from another class or how to call a method from another class, and that's very important. That's something that a lot of people struggle with when you're starting with Unity 3D, because a lot of the times it's confusing. It looks confusing. It's it's a weird way to do it, but it makes so much sense once you understand it. So I'll be discussing that in the next part. We'll set up another 
another cube with another script that will access the player's health from that cube and do something when the player's health equals zero. We'll, put the, we'll detect that from a different object, which is cool. Sounds simple, and it is, but it's not just as straightforward as it sounds. That's it for this part. My name is Austin. I'll see you next time.